Today, we're going to try and recreate a classic car by creating a V8 engine and swapping it into the car in Assetto Corsa. Hi there, uh, Zephyr J here. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. It occurred to me that I've spent the last uh, month or so um, so busy working on engine crane and trying to get it to work and uh, trying to improve it in various ways uh, but i've not actually had a lot of time to sit down and have a play with it uh, myself um, what i have been doing recently is trying it out on various mods um, i know there's plenty of cars out there which it doesn't work on yet um, so i've been trying to test them all out and trying to get it working with them um, in the process of that, I, I stumbled upon uh, a mod pack called Touring Car Legends by Baza, uh, and in that pack was this car here, which is an MGB GT. Um, now this car, a, a lot of significance for me uh, personally. It was uh, it's a car that I've grown up with. Um, my mum owned this car. Uh, my older brother had one at some point, um, and me and my brothers and along with my dad um, kind of went about restoring my mum's car um, after it had been off the road for a while and we kind of went through the process of pretty much rebuilding the whole thing but in addition to that um, the original version of the MGB GT was released with an inline four engine however in 1973 they released a version that had a V8 engine in it, the MGB GT V8, um, which was obviously an improvement performance wise. Um, now this mod of the car here is uh, pre-1973, so it has the inline four engine in it. Admittedly, the mod does have a um, somewhat spec'd um, version of the engine, so it's uh, not the representing what it would have been like at stock. Um, because it's the kind of touring car version um, but I thought what would be fun to do and this is kind of the reason I made the tool to sort of have a play around with things and be able to mod cars and, and their engines in a kind of realistic way um, is create the V8 engine that was made uh, to go in this car uh, in automation and then swap it in and then we can test it out on track and see how it performs versus the um, the inline four version so yeah so i'm just gonna uh, go through that today and um, hope you enjoy before we go ahead and make our v engine uh, I've taken the mod out for a few laps and around Donington uh, to try and set a baseline time uh, that we can use to judge how we're doing with the, the engine creation process. Um, so the plan will be uh, do a few laps, uh, get the best time for those laps, that will be our target. Uh, I'll then create the stock V8 engine, um, so that I'm expecting to be a few seconds slower than this uh, touring car variant. Um, and then once we've worked out how much time we've got to make up, uh, we can then look at making some improvements to the engine and keep tweaking it until we can match the, uh, the mod's performance. To perform the engine swap, I'll be using my tool Engine Crane, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, if you enjoy experiments like this and want to keep up to date with the, the latest on the tool, uh, then consider subscribing. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoy the video. So coming up to the line of the best lap I could do, and that's a 125.1. So our first port of call is finding out some details about this uh, V8 engine that we want to create. Um, so thankfully the MG Owners Club have got a, a quite handy page here that kind of go through some of the, the history of the car. Um, and the bit that we're most interested in for the moment is some technical specs. So this has got some good details on um, let's see, uh, eight cylinders at 90 degree V. So that's something that we can set in automation. We've got the bore and stroke information, 
uh, compression ratio, uh, some information about uh, how the valves are uh, configured, so push rod. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is a really good starting point to uh, help us create it in uh, automation. Um, and in addition to this, the other thing we're going to need um, to get a, so we can roughly approximate it correctly is a torque curve, which I've also managed to find uh, one online. So I'm going to take this data, uh, have a play around in automation and hopefully come back with something that matches this fairly closely. So after a long time playing around uh, with all the various permutations and uh, quality sliders and, and all the bits and pieces you can set in automation, uh, this is what I've managed to come up with. I think with a bit more tweaking, it can maybe be closer, um, but I, th I think this is a fairly good approximation. Um, so we've got our uh, torque, max torque is fairly close, 260, we've got uh, 262. Uh, reported in the real engine. Of course, these were reported. Um, I think they're factory reported, so these are never 100% accurate anyway. Um, so we've managed to get it around the same number uh, at around uh, the same sort of uh, RPM range. So 2,900. We're kind of hitting our peak at 2,900, 3,000 RPM. So that's uh, fairly accurate. Um, and the thing I really wanted. It took me a while to kind of get right was having our uh, kind of peak power uh, from sort of 4,000 RPM to 5,000. Um, we kind of peak up a little bit in the middle, um, which I couldn't work out a way uh, to kind of get the torque curve up here um, and keep this completely flat on the way down. Um, but it's pretty close, I think. Uh, I think at 4,000. We're at 103 kilowatts uh, and at 5,000 we're at 103, so kind of the same. So that's just a, a kilowatt over um, our graph that we're, we're trying to match. Uh, so I think this is a pretty good starting point. So I did a little bit more digging on the uh, the engine and uh, it turns out, reading the NG Owners Club page again, another a really good source for, for data for this, uh, is the, the VA is the Rover VA or based off of the Rover VA. Uh, which was quite a popular engine um, around the time and it was used all the way up into the, the early 90s I think um, used in ended up uh, going into Land Rovers and um, slightly different configurations to the one that was used in the MGB um, but it also went into uh, the Rover SD1 and having a little search around on, uh, for other mods I've stumbled across this which is the Rover SD1 uh, V8 uh, 3.5 litre, which is the same um, capacity that is used in the MGB um, mod. And so I think to give it a little bit more realism, we can take the engine noise from this car and put it into our modded um, MGB GT. So, so we can not only have a, a matching torque curve and um, hopefully similar engine characteristics, but also we should get the engine noise as well. So this is the end result of our first attempt. Um, so it is slower as we expected. Um, but I'm pleasantly surprised with the uh, the noise swap. It definitely sounds like a V8. Um, so I think this is a, a nice place to start from. Um, so what we'll do now, uh, we'll get the lap time that we can achieve in this version of the car. And then we'll look at trying to add some performance to it. So we'll skip ahead to the best lap that I managed to achieve. And that's at 1 minute 28.2. So I've gone away and done a bit of research on how we can improve the power of our V8. I wanted to do it in a at least semi-realistic way. Um, so I've gone out onto the internet and had a look for parts that you can find for the Rover V8 engine. I found a few. Um, so we've got this here, the uh, four barrel um, carburetor, which is an improvement over the um, the original. In addition to that, we've got this um, 
stainless steel uh, tubular exhaust system improve the flow uh, and on some forums uh, posts I've, I've seen multiple uh, people talking about improving the compression ratio of the engine so 8.25 to 1 is the original which is fairly low particularly by modern standards and there's a lot of posts saying that it is possible to improve that uh, one example here is saying that using uh, newer pistons and rings you can get it up to 9.35 so I'm gonna uh, use that um, as a kind of another improvement that we can go with uh, so the end result of that is we've just upped our compression ratio to match um, katana man's uh, uh, suggestion on pistons we have improved our carburetor so we've gone from a twin single barrel carburetor to a four barrel uh, single carburetor and in addition to that we've got uh, the tubular mid which is the, the smallest tubular exhaust we can uh, use in automation and so the net result of that is our peak horsepower matches up quite nicely with the inline four uh, touring car variant uh, that the mod has. So 134 kilowatts roughly equates to about 180 brake horsepower, which is what the inline four is putting out. We have more torque, um, which I guess you would expect um, more cylinders. And, um, so down the lower end, we should be a, a, a bit better off. The other nice thing is that the aesthetics match up quite nicely to the uh, things I found on the internet. So the carburetor there looks very similar to what we've got. And the uh, tubular kind of look of the exhaust looks quite similar, although it does look a bit fancier on uh, this one. But yeah, so let's give this a whirl and see if we can match the touring car type. So after doing a few laps around Donington, uh, coming up to the line on my best lap, and that was a 125.1. So I reckon we can call that a success. So we've managed to match the original mods four cylinder engine with a few minor tweaks. Uh, but as that engine is tuned, um, we've got a bit of headroom to uh, tune this V8 a bit more, I think. Uh, so let's see what kind of extra performance and uh, lap time we can find from it. Um, so yeah, again, kind of following the, the same pattern as the first time round with the upgrades. I've gone away on the internet, tried to find some uh, hopefully realistic uh, changes that could be made. So first up, I found this uh, even better uh, carburetor setup. Uh, and we can have a little look in here. Where do we do it? Fuel system. Um, so yeah, we've swapped in this. Um, and improved the intake manifold as well to kind of match up with that. Uh, another thing we found is the uh, improved exhaust again. Um, so found some nicer manifolds. Um, so we've just increased the header size a bit from what we had before, matched up with that. Um, and we've now a minor change. We've got a straight through uh, exhaust matching up with this one. Uh, in addition to that, we have also increased the compression a fair amount, now 11 to 1, uh, and gone with a more aggressive cam profile, which is something that would be, I think, pretty um, standard when you're trying to tune a car for racing rather than a regular road car. Uh, we've also got a few more RPMs to play with, so we now hit a limit of 7,500. I don't think the original car would have had uh, a rev limiter on it, um, but for the purposes of uh, this mod the um, limit was 6,000 I think. The other significant change is switching to um, E85 uh, fuel so again something else that would be used in a kind of racing environment. These are latest changes we're now putting out 200 kilowatts uh, 6,009 rpm that's equates to about 260 270 uh, brake horsepower. Uh, and we're up to 316 newton meters. Um, so yeah, so we're 
a lot of our power is a lot higher up in the RPM range as well, so it should be more a revy engine. So coming up to the line in our tuned V8, 122.4, a nice two and a half seconds worth of improvement. So there we have it, a V8 swap in Assetto Corsa to give us the MGB GT V8. Um, yeah, as I say, I've always enjoyed just messing around with uh, stuff like this. Um, so yeah, if it's something that you also enjoyed, uh, consider liking. Uh, and see more of this kind of thing or just want to keep up to date with uh, what's going on with the, the tool engine crane um, consider subscribing I'll leave a link to all the mods I used in the description as well as a link to engine crane so all that's left is to wish you a good day and I'll see you in the next one <laughs>